if you were here the last half hour, you met my partner, Dr. Birga Kandalavala, and she was talking about the medical options to help people lose weight. Unfortunately, uh, a certain percentage of people will not find medical options to be a strong enough tool. And that's what surgery is. It's a tool to help you lose weight. There are multiple operations, and I'm going to talk about most of them today, but they all share a common theme. They all help patients not be as hungry, and when you're not hungry, it's much easier to learn new eating habits. They all restrict how much you can eat so that you get full on a smaller amount of food, and then that small amount of food tends to stick with you longer, giving you that feeling of fullness throughout the day, so you're less likely to come back for seconds or snack. And then some of the operations incorporate malabsorption, which means you don't get 100% of the calories you eat are not absorbed into your system. If they're not absorbed into your system, they, your body can't use them as calories, but if they're excess, they also can't store them as calories. There's three basic operations I want to talk about today. The laparoscopic adjustable gastric band, the laparoscopic sleeve gastrectomy, and the laparoscopic adjustable gastric bypass. They have a lot of things in common, but they also have some things that are differences. When you decide to move forward to consider surgery to help you lose weight, the first step is usually to think about, is surgery right for you, just in general? The questions I go over when I meet with patients is first we talk about their weight and their health problems. In general, surgery is recommended for patients with a body mass index over 40, which translates to approximately 100 pounds overweight, or a BMI of 35 if they have significant health problems that we expect will get better with weight loss, such as diabetes, high blood pressure, sleep apnea, heart disease, and also losing weight lowers your risk of getting cancer. So the first step is when we meet with patients is we calculate their body mass index and we try to understand exactly how heavy they are. The next question I pose to patients is, um, have they tried everything else? Have they tried good quality diets like Dr. Kandalavala talks about and offers? Have they tried prescription medication if they meet the medical criteria? Have they try incorporated exercise into their lives? Have they changed their relationship with food? Trying to work on not eating because they're bored, not eating because they're depressed, not eating because they fought with their kids or their husband. And if people have already started to make the changes, but they are just not seeing the health improvements they want or need, then they need a stronger tool, and that's where surgery comes into it. And so the final thing we talk about then is which surgery would be the right one. So I'm going to go through them and we're going to talk about the three basic ones. I'm going to try to hold up some pictures so you can kind of see what they look like. And while I talk about each one, we'll talk a little bit about the pros and the cons of each of the operations. So the first operation that I hope you can see is the laparoscopic adjustable gastric band. So this is a cartoon that shows what the inside of your belly looks like. I'm sorry, this is going to be a little more challenging. Let me do this way. This is your liver. This is your stomach. The band is a plastic band that's placed around the top of the stomach. And there's tubing that comes down, and there's a little reservoir that sits under the skin. The band can be tightened in clinic. And as we tighten up the band, it gets a little more restrictive. People eat less and less food, and they have to change their eating habits. The average weight loss with this operation is losing about 40 to 50 percent of what you need to lose in the first three years. So that means if you're about 100 pounds overweight, you can anticipate losing probably about 40 to 50 pounds over two to three years with the band. Now there are some people that do much better than that, and there are some people who do much worse than that. Unfortunately, the good thing about it is it is a very safe operation. It's the lowest risk operation we have, both at the time of surgery and for long-term complications. However, unfortunately, complications can happen. There's a piece of plastic in your body that can move. The piece of plastic can move up, it can move down, it can slip, and if it slips, then it's not 
going to be the tool you need it to be to lose weight. So if you have a complication related to the band, sometimes it can be replaced or rep repositioned, but sometimes it just needs to come out. The next operation that we would talk about, I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna tilt the camera while I move this, would be the laparoscopic gastric sleeve. The gastric sleeve is the only completely irreversible operation we have. And that's because with the sleeve, I cut your stomach from the bottom to the top, and I take out most of this side of the stomach. So you're left with a small little stomach that's about the size and shape of a banana. So this is a purely restrictive operation. It limits how much you can eat. But once the food leaves the stomach, it's gonna be digested normally. The other nice thing about this operation is this part of your stomach that I take out is the part that makes the hormones that make you feel hungry. So most people with a sleeve are not hungry for about nine months to a year after surgery. To the point that some people actually have to set an alarm and remind themselves to eat. Well, it's much easier to learn new eating habits if you're not hungry all the time. And it's much easier to learn to eat smaller portions if you're not hungry all the time. This operation is, has more risks than the band, but less risks than some of the operations I'm gonna talk about in a few minutes. The most, this can almost always be done laparoscopically, so five to six small incisions. The operation takes about an hour and a half, and most people are in the hospital between one and two days after a surgery like this. You are on a liquid diet for several weeks after surgery, and it's a gradual advancement back to a normal diet, but a much lower quantity diet than you were eating before. The risks of surgery primarily have to do with this very long staple line. Anytime you staple the stomach or the bowel, there is a risk of leak, meaning what should be on the inside leaks to the outside. The leak rate is very low with the sleeve, but it's not zero. The other risk we always worry about is bleeding. At those staple lines, you can have bleeding and a small percentage, probably less than 1%, might need a transfusion after an operation like this. But by far, 95 to 98% of patients who get a sleeve come in, have surgery, go home on the first, second, or maybe early on the third day, and they do very well. The average weight loss with this is about 60 to 65 percent of what you want to lose. So if you're 100 pounds overweight, that means you can anticipate about a 60 to 65 pound weight loss. And with that weight loss, we see a dramatic improvement in health. Diabetes goes away in between 60 and 80 percent of patients, depending on what type of diabetes they had and how many medications they were on. High blood pressure goes away about 60% of the time. Sleep apnea, needing to sleep with a CPAP machine, also gets better with these operations. So in general, people see a dramatic improvement in their health with this operation. And then the final one I'm going to show you is the laparoscopic gastric bypass. So this is by far the gold standard in the United States. There are more people getting ga laparoscopic gastric bypasses than any of the other operations. It's also the operation that has been around the longest. Basically what I do is here is your esophagus and I take staplers and I staple a very small little stomach. Then I bring the small intestine up and we make a connection. So food goes one way and the digestive juices go another and they join up. And so it's only at about this point that digestion really starts to happen. So again, this helps patients not be very hungry and get full on a small amount of food. But because digestion doesn't start until downstream, they don't get 100% of the calories out of what they eat, but they also don't get 100% of the vitamins out of the vitamins that they take or the food that they eat. So one of the things to consider when considering this operation is you do have to be on vitamins for the rest of your life. You have to be on a multivitamin, you have to be on extra calcium, and some people need even more vitamin supplements than that. This operation can also almost always be done laparoscopically. It's six small incisions. The operation takes a little longer than a sleeve, maybe more like two to two and a half hours, 
and most people are in the hospital two to three days after something like this. Again, there are risks and there are benefits to surgery. The benefit is a very good weight loss. The average weight loss is between about 65 and 70 percent of what they need to lose. So again, if you're 100 pounds overweight, that's about 65 to 70 pounds. There is a uh, dramatic improvement in blood sugar metabolism. So people who have insulin resistance or are pre-diabetic usually have their blood sugars get completely normal. Patients who are diabetics, most of them leave the hospital on no medicines. And very few of them need the medicines restarted. There's also dramatic improvements in high blood pressure, high cholesterol, heart disease, sleep apnea, um, the list goes on and on. In fact, there's almost no health problems that are either caused or made worse by weight that losing weight through a gastric bypass doesn't improve to one degree or another. Some with complete resolution and some with only improvement. But as I mentioned, there are cons also anytime you think about surgery. And of the three operations I've talked about today, this is the one with the highest risks. There's a higher risk of leak than say the sleeve would have. The risk for this operation is between about one and two percent. The risk of bleeding is also about one or two percent. The risk of blood clots is about one to two percent. So again, 90 to 95 percent of patients come in, have surgery, and leave when they're supposed to. But if they have a complication, and a major complication can happen in about 5% of people, they can be very significant. They can result in long stays in the hospital. They can result in needing additional operations. And people have died of the complications of a gastric bypass. People have also died after the other two operations I mentioned. However, the risk is much lower with the other two than with this one. However, even with saying that, the gastric bypass is much safer than many of the operations that we hear about every day that people have to improve their health. It's safer than a heart bypass. It's safer than most of the cancer operations. It's safer than ulcer surgery. So the operation is very safe, but when you look at the spectrum of band, sleeve, and bypass, this is the one that has the most risks. Well, those are the three operations I wanted to talk to you about. The final thing I would say, and I don't have any pictures to show you, is there are weight loss surgery operations that have been done since the 1960s that um, have not withstood the test of time. And so there are hundreds, if not thousands, of patients in our area who had some sort of weight loss surgery many years ago and are struggling with complications of those operations. The message I would like to get out there is those operations, we've learned a lot from them, and the current operations, the sleeve and the gastric bypass in particular, are really showing the benefits of the test of time. The weight losses that I talked about of 60 to 70 percent are showing to persist at um, about five to eight years for the sleeve, and that's about all the data we have because it's a fairly new operation. But with the gastric bypass, the weight loss is, persists and the health benefits stick with the patient out to as long as 15 to 20 years, according to most studies, including the patients that here we've been following at the Nebraska Medical Center for the past 20 years. So if you need a stronger tool than diet and exercise, Surgery is definitely a possibility, and we're happy to talk to you in much more detail about the different operations, the pros and cons of each of the operations, to try to help you understand why you should think about surgery, what the risks are, what the benefits are, and what you're going to have to change about your relationship with food in order to make this be successful in the long term. Before we started this chat, we did have several people email in questions. Um, since no one has sent me a question so far, I'll go with the list of the ones that were sent in before. The first question that was sent to me a couple of days ago had to do with insurance coverage and the cost of these operations. Insurance such as Nebraska Medicaid and Medicare do cover bariatric surgery if you meet their medical necessity criteria. So that includes that you meet their weight requirements, 
that you have um, significant health problems related to your weight that we expect will get better, and that you've worked with a primary care doctor or a dietitian usually for at least six months to make efforts to lose weight before you consider surgery as an option. Besides Medicare and Medicaid, there's a lot more, uh, it's harder to make blanket statements for individual insurance companies because it's less about the insurance company and it's more about the policy you have. So for example, TRICARE will cover the band and they will cover the gastric bypass, but at this point in time they will not cover the sleeve. Um, they are, my understanding is the military is doing a study of this and we certainly are optimistic that they will change that policy, but as of right now, if you have TRICARE, the sleeve should not be one of the options you're considering. If you have a commercial insurance, Blue Cross Blue Shield, United Healthcare, Coventry, it's less about the insurance company and it's more about your policy. And so the first thing you want to do is pull out your insurance policy and usually on the first page there's a list of exclusions and that's a list of things that the policy will not cover no matter who you are, no matter how good the letter is that I write from the doctor's office. Usually on that list are things like cosmetic dentistry, infertility, plastic surgery. You will almost always see on that list that they do not cover treatments of obesity. And what you would hope you see is in parentheses they say, except surgery. Because what they're saying in legal speak is they will not cover your medical weight loss, but they will cover your surgical. If it doesn't have in that parentheses or in a comment except surgery, and they say they simply will not cover treatments of obesity, then usually that means your policy has an exclusion and they will not cover weight loss surgery. But you should always call the insurance company, talk to a representative, find out the details of your specific policy. And when you do, I encourage you to keep records of who you talk to, when you talk to them, and what phone number you called. So that then when we approach them about surgery, we have documentation of what they've already told you. Now for some people, unfortunately, they will have exclusions in their policy and no amount of appeals or no amount of discussion is going to result in insurance covering surgery. So the follow-up question we got um, through the internet earlier was how much does this cost? We do have a self-pay package here at the Nebraska Medical Center. The price varies depending on which operation you are considering having and it also depends on your size and how high risk you are. But ballpark figures, a laparoscopic adjustable band costs about $13,500. That does include the surgeon's fees, the anesthesiologist, the time in the operating room, and a day in the hospital after the procedure. The laparoscopic sleeve costs between seventeen and nineteen thousand, depending on how large you are and how much you how long you end up staying in the hospital. And the gastric bypass runs between about twenty one thousand five hundred dollars and twenty three thousand five hundred dollars, again depending on your size and your health problems. If you have a bad heart and you need to be in a cardiac monitored bed, it is more expensive than if you do not have heart problems and you do not need a telemetry bed. So those are the questions we had regarding finances. Can you remind me what the other questions were? Um, oh, and risks. Risk. Yes. Well, somebody sent in an email hoping that I would really make sure I stressed the risks. Um, and I think I have done that, but essentially as you're talking about this and thinking about it and as part of the process to think about it, if you come to our program, we discuss the risks and benefits at your very first visit and we repeat it several times. We do use a video-based educational system, so when you leave after your first visit, you will have um, a website that you can go to to log in and watch 10 to 15 minute videos about each of the operations and these will also go through the pros and the cons of each operation to try to help you understand how you would need to change and understand the risks of the operation you're taking. 
We had um, a preoperative class where one of our nurse case managers goes over the risks again. And finally, they're discussed the final time at your history and physical appointment. So during the process, I think you will get a very good handle on the individual risks associated with the operation, but also we spend a lot of time discussing your personal risks. If you have a history of heart disease, your risk is going to be different than someone who doesn't. And so we need to talk about what your personal risk is and not just general statistics that are in the literature. The same if you have kidney disease, the same if you have lung disease. As far as our particular program, we have had a bariatric surgery program at the Nebraska Medical Center since 1992. We are the oldest program that is still functioning it, um, in Omaha and, and all of uh, western Iowa and eastern Nebraska. We follow between uh, four and 5,000 patients that have had one surgery or another. Most of them were done here, but we do follow patients that have moved to this area and had surgery in other parts of the country or even the world. Because we are a academic medical center with all of the subspecialties, we also get a lot of very high risk patients referred in from the Kansas City area, the Des Moines area, up in South Dakota. Because while there are bariatric surgery programs there, their hospitals do not have the infrastructure and support and they do not have all the specialists needed if a really high risk patient ends up having a complication. I'm going to do everything I can to prevent you from having that complication. But one of the reasons I like practicing at the Nebraska Medical Center is if you do have a complication, we have all of the people and the resources and the manpower to take care of you and because that's what we want to do. I want to do a safe, good operation on you that has a long success record so you have an excellent chance of losing the weight you need to get healthier and keeping that weight off and seeing those health benefits for the rest of your life.